Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works. Last week we created these two pages using old jelly prints and stencils. This one was created using gold spray paint and this one was made using black gesso. And then the motif was outlined with a gold gel pen. I intended to create these background papers as part of a new two page spread in my art journal. And a couple of people last week caught a glimpse of the journal and requested that I do a flip through. That's something I have never done publicly, but since I've had some requests for it, I thought I'd go ahead and do that today. And then we can actually work on building a new set of journal pages together. So this is a hardbound sketchbook. I do not remember the make, the brand. All I know is that it was pretty inexpensive and I liked the fact that it was substantial and it had a decent hard binding on it. So this cover was created using, you know, hand dyed fibers, um, some stenciled motifs in the background that are pretty faint, but that still give another layer of interest to the design. And then all kinds of, you know, sort of steampunk pieces here that are both cast and purchased. I can't remember how I adhered them down, but it's, it's been many years and they're just as solid as the day that they were affixed. There's some symbology here for me. My approach to art making is what I would call workmanlike, meaning I don't really believe in waiting for inspiration. I believe that inspiration comes when we commit to making something. In other words, if I don't have an idea today about what it is that I want to create, then my job is to sit down and work on just cranking out some background papers. And during that process, inspiration inevitably arises. So you'll see this wrench and the sort of industrial feel to these components. And to me, that symbolizes this approach to making art to just committing to doing the work and having faith that the inspiration will come as I demonstrate my commitment to the task. Another motif here is this sword. This is a die cut from, I think it's an old Spellbinder set. I don't even know if it's available anymore. Anyway, the inclusion of the sword is a reference to, well, it's an important symbol from the tarot, which is not something that I follow or quote unquote believe in. But I do think that there's archetypal significance to the symbols used in tarot. And one of those symbols is the sword. And to me personally, the sword represents the ability to sever that which is unhealthy in our lives and also to cut through any confusion, leaving crystal clear clarity. So that's why these two symbols are prominent and form the basis of this industrial type of design. The spine is just beads that I salvaged from an old blouse and gave a faux rust treatment to, and then sewed to a strip of cardstock and glued that down over some black lace. The back cover is, what is this? Oh, it's a mixture of stamping and using distress inks, just creating sort of a vaguely grunge effect. I really like the feeling to this. So when, oh, and the closure is one of those Tim Holtz faucet knobs 
and just some dangling pieces here, a couple of keys and a little metal skull on some dyed ribbon. And it just closes like that. Couldn't be simpler. When I open up the journal, I find there's this pocket created here. It's got an important family memento here and a tag that I received from Michelle Ward. And I'm totally a Michelle Ward fangirl. If you don't know who she is, go check out Green Pepper Press to find the most beautiful and sophisticated stamps and stencils you're ever going to come across. And speaking of Michelle Ward, on this page, you'll see one of the beautiful stamps from the Juliet set in the background here. Just a series of die cuts culminating in a piece of heat embossed soda can with a little skull and crossbones motif. These embossed pockets were just dyed with all kinds of distress inks. These are electronically cut embellishments that have had faux rust applied to them. And inside the pockets are little dedication cards, again, carrying through the industrial workman-like theme. and then the date that the journal was begun. So this first set of pages includes a layered stencil motif on this side created with distress inks and a white gel pen, some die cut envelopes over a Harlequin jelly print on this side, and the little envelopes contain some secret mementos. This uh, Tim Holtz die, I think, is one of the most useful that I've ever invested in. I really love making these little pockets. My favorite part of this stenciled collage over here is this tiny little spider motif in the bottom left hand corner. This was a hand cut stencil that I made many years ago. I don't even know where it is now, but I love the way the spider sort of echoes the shape of this splat and the energy carries through from the lower left up to the upper right. This is another set of pages using some SVG electronic cut leaf shapes, some commercial stencils, and then just a bunch of collage. I was experimenting with all kinds of layering techniques on these pages. These pages are created with a gesso resist in the background and then lots of distress inking and stamping over the top. Uh, let's see, this beautiful window design is again a Michelle Ward stamp. These are all heat embossed motifs that have been tinted with distress inks and in the background is a heat emboss mirror technique. This two page spread was crazy busy and I couldn't stand it when I finished it. So I used the same stenciling technique that I demonstrated last week where I just placed stencils over the top and then applied black gesso through the design in order to mask the majority of the background, leaving the colorful areas only in the places where the stencil reveals them. You'll find that a lot of my journal pages don't have traditional focal points. 
This is more like just a pattern that covers the entire field with a few metallic highlights just to create some subtle emphasis. The backgrounds here were jelly prints embellished with some stenciling, some heat embossing, and stamping and collage. I still love this spread. Again, another set of pages without a real focal point. I was very excited when I first began cutting my own stencils. And so I used this art journal to test out all kinds of techniques using those stencils and jelly prints. The same stencil that was used last week also was used in the background of this jelly print, although it's extremely subtle. This mask of a crowned crow is something I designed years and years ago, and I still love that motif. I also love sunset colors and being able to create sort of an atmospheric feeling to a set of pages like this. And then this is just another mood I was experimenting with, sort of the feeling of a bright spring morning. In the background here is a crumpled paper technique and the overlays are again electronically die cut vine motifs. Here we have the same stencils used again but in a different way along with additional die cut pieces from like Spellbinder set, some Tim Holtz designs, electronic die cuts of these clock faces and all kinds of faux metal and rust techniques. This set of pages, again, has no visible focal point. I know I'm not alone in having cared for a parent who was disappearing into the cloud of Alzheimer's. To me, this is a visual representation of the fading of my mother's cognitive abilities and the small points of vivid golden light that remained at that point. This was an exercise in embellishing stamped motifs using Stabilo All pencils creating freestanding embellishments using heat embossing and distress inks, a couple of stencil motifs developed from some free SVGs I found online. And this particular piece is called Consultation. I love the humor of it and also the juxtaposition of the images of skeletons with these elaborate scroll work pieces and the brightly colored butterflies. This is a photograph of myself when I was, I don't know, maybe four or five years old. I've worked with the image in Photoshop to place the child in a mysterious looking forest. The photograph was actually taken like in a concrete parking lot. I spent a lot of time in solitary play as a little one. And even though I might have been crouched in an urban parking lot, in my imagination, 
I've always been most at home in an enchanted wood. I honestly don't understand the symbolism of these three Harlequin panels here, but somehow I believe they allude to possible futures for this child. This spread is called Visitation, and here I've taken two skull studies that I labored over for countless hours. I then printed them out and created collage elements with them, embellishing with gold heat embossing here. There are some die cut pieces in the background creating a kind of framework and anchoring. I've blogged about this particular journal spread. I won't go into it here. If you're interested in this story, I will link to that blog post below. Suffice to say, it's about a journey from feeling like this <laughs> to arriving at a place like this and saying goodbye to an old friend and teacher. I left the next couple of pages blank. I'll insert something in there. Maybe that's where we'll put today's spread. This piece was made using printed acetate some of Christy Taylor's stenciling in the background, latex lace that's been embellished with metallic waxes, all kinds of heat embossed embellishments, some textiles that have been dyed and embossed. I actually really love this spread and there's an old YouTube video about the creation of these pages. And I think we're at the end, except for this set of pages with which I'm not really happy. So I hesitated to even show them to you, but um, it's all about experimentation and learning as we go. So this is acetate with all kinds of alcohol ink and ink mixatives in the background, metallic heat embossing over a jelly print, some die cuts and Dresden trim. This is a print available from the Graphics Fairy that's been treated with some over stamping and lots of spray inks. Again, I'm not terribly happy with it, but Maybe someday I'll do some rearranging of the elements. And then here's the interior of the back cover. Again, lots of playing with stenciling and heat embossing and stamping. And again, carrying through that industrial sort of workmanlike motif. So, that's a walkthrough of this art journal as it stands today. Let's see if we can add a couple of pages here. Now, like I said, last week I created these two pages and I was thinking initially of using them in the same spread. But the more that I lived with that idea, the less I liked it. I'm going to set this one aside for today and work with this piece. And I've created a companion print using the gearbox stencil here and the circular thinking stencil here, both over brightly colored jelly prints and masked out with gold spray paint. So once these pieces are mounted side by side inside the journal, I want to, let's see. Actually, that's how I would like these to be arranged. And then I've created some acetate overlays 
to place on top of these motifs like so it's on the verge of becoming autumn here in new england and it's my favorite time of year one i find deeply inspiring and i love the way that the skeletons of the trees emerge as the leaves fall away and corvids of all kinds but especially the common crow are as close to a spirit animal as I will ever have. So I'll be working with these images, building up some layers, and we'll see what happens. So the very first thing that I want to do to prepare these pages to accept the prints that we're going to be applying to them is to add a mixture of these two acrylic craft paints down the center of the spread. It's inevitable that some of this area will be exposed. So I want the colors to at least be reminiscent of the color palette that's evident in the background of the prints. I think I'll begin with this royal blue. and then add a bit of the turquoise as we reach the center area. And it's as simple as that. I'm really not going to worry about adding any more color than this. Great. Now I'll speed up the process by drying it with a heat tool. Good enough. I'll hang on to these paints just in case we need to do any touch-ups elsewhere. And now I need to determine how I'm going to arrange these pages and affix them to the surface. I think I like this arrangement with sort of the heavy motif here and then echoed by this large circular area here. So I'm good with that. Yep, I think that is going to do nicely. So to begin this process, I'm going to apply an even-ish layer of tacky glue onto this surface and then adhere the print right on top of it. I have a couple of old plastic dividers that I like to place beneath the page that I'm currently working on to protect the rest of the book. It also provides a support that's a little more rigid. And I'll just be using a gift card to spread it out as thinly and evenly as I'm capable of. Okay, so this page is glued in place and it's not perfect. None of my journal pages are perfect, and I'm okay with that. This is my private playground. But it's not going to come apart. And once it dries, I'll come back and be able to trim away the excess along that edge. Now I'll repeat the same process for the other side. This page applied a little more cleanly because I wasn't attempting to glue it onto the back side of a page that already had quite a bit of texture. The texture here is much more subtle, so the substrate was less bumpy to begin with. 
Now I'll allow these to cure for a few minutes before continuing with the process. While the tacky glue is curing, I'll take a few minutes to use my paper trimmer and cut down the overall size of the laser transparencies. That way, when they get mounted on top of the background papers, they won't protrude out past the edge of the existing pages. I'm using score tape. I think this is the quarter inch wide variety to affix the acetate at just the top and the bottom of each page. Score tape is incredibly strong stuff and this will be plenty sturdy to hold this in place. And then the final step is to flip the pages over and trim away the excess paper and acetate using the edge of the existing pages as a guide. I did consider adding further embellishments, but I was so happy with the bold graphic statement that this simple spread made that I chose to leave it at that. I really appreciate that you took the time to walk through my art journal with me today. It's one of those things that feels really intimate and I'm grateful to have an opportunity to share it with you. And I hope that this simple demonstration of layering acetate transparencies over jelly print and stenciled backgrounds has been helpful to you in some way. Thanks again for hanging out with me today. Until next time, bye.